commencer avec une question par un Great, how are you? Good, thanks. How's life? It's, it's going well. Yeah. For two questions. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to know how you how you're going. Uh, things are good. Uh, just spending a lot of time at home with the kids, and uh, you know, just enjoying enjoying my favorite time of year, the fall. Hunting. And yeah, yeah, I've been out uh, out of field quite a bit, and like I said, just uh, enjoying time with my kids. We don't know uh, Gary. If you can answer to that, but fans uh, want to know if we gonna see you play again for this team. Uh, well, we'll have to. Uh, you know, like to kind of really just take it step by step. I don't, uh, you know, I don't have like a plan to retire right at this moment. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, right now my goal is to just be pain free from day to day. You know, I'm still having some issues getting up and down stairs and, you know, carrying my kids up and down stairs is, uh, is difficult. So my first priority is just to get my body in a, and a place to where I'm pain free in my day to day living and go from there. Hi, Gary. I'm just curious to know on the game, game night open against Toronto, what was going through your head when you hear the crowd and you came on the, to the ice with your hat on and your seat? Uh, just uh, like an overwhelming sense of gratitude is the best way to um, describe that. Um, you know, just uh, heartwarming. Yeah. How tough is it to accept the situation? Because when you were healthy, you were able to play on the stage. Now it's not because once you're retired, you're home, you cannot play. How tough is it? It's frustrating, no question. Um, you know, it's like you go from you know being in the Stanley Cup final to be sitting here today, and it's a pretty short amount of time, but. You know, it's uh, it's not a position I envisioned myself being in, and not too long ago. So it's uh, it's it's been a it's been an emotional roller coaster for myself, and uh, you know, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I've had my family there, my kids, my wife have been you know very supportive, and my family at home, and you know, every fan that I've had an interaction with, you know, over the last you know year and a half has been, you know, just overwhelmingly positive. So I'm really thankful for that. Gary Tangles and Stu Cowan. Hey, Gary. Um, can you give us as detailed of an answer as possible in terms of what you had to go through on a daily basis during the playoff run to play those games? Uh, it was, uh, it was, um, it's mentally challenging. Like, you know, playoffs are, uh, or a grind for anybody and playing hurts, uh, you know, even more so. And, uh, you know, once you kind of get into the game, it's like, you know, everybody's playing hurt, you know, some way or another. Morning skates were tough. <laughs> um, you're not as amped up to, to practice in the morning, but it was, uh, it's definitely trying, but everybody, everybody's uh, by the time, especially by the time you get to the final is playing with something. So um, I was just trying to, you know, stay focused on the goal and uh, and get myself uh, mentally prepared every day. And it's just so, you know, such a such a goal orientated time that you're just focused on this w one goal. You're you're willing to put anything else aside, and uh, that's fine. Um, but it's, it takes a toll on you. You know, it's a it's a physical game, but you know that's why we play it. It's 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 part of the journey. You just meant about the physical preparation and. What do you have to do to get on the ice and be able to perform at the ability that you did? Yeah, it's uh, it was uh, you know basically uh, you know bite a stick and, and suck it up and get out there. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. Stu, Kerry, your oldest daughter, I imagine, is old enough to understand who you, who your dad is as a goalie for the Canadians and what he means for the city. I'm just wondering, from her perspective, how much do you think she's missing her dad being a goalie? How much do you enjoy having her dad at home all day? 
yeah for sure i mean it's it's been such a blessing just to be at home you know kind of getting into a routine being at the house and being a, a, a presence in their a consistent presence in their life especially like now you know where i'd be gone you know half the week a lot of the time so she de she's definitely at an age where she understands that uh, you know daddy's a hockey player he's a goalie and um <laughs> It's kind of funny sometimes, you know, the other night we're at the Owls game and she's uh, my little personal assistant handing me little footballs to sign with from fans. So I think they uh, they definitely miss, I think, what, especially Liv, like watching dad and warm up. So that was kind of getting to be a be kind of a ritualistic thing that we would do together. And I think she's going to miss that for sure. Dr. Fox, what's going to be Carrie, I think you saw different doctors. Am I wrong? I did, yeah. I, uh, you know, we had our doctors here. Um, obviously, my doctor in uh, in New York. I went for a second opinion in Pittsburgh at the end of the season. That's where I had my, uh, you know, my end of the year kind of second opinion. You know, on what I was, what my, what my future held, and what you know kind of a plan would be going forward. And that's when that uh, surgery was suggested and. Uh, you know, I, again, I was not uh, particularly, uh, you know, fond of the of such an intrusive, you know, surgery. It's, uh, you know, in my opinion, is a little risky for my, you know, quality of life after, and it worries me a little bit. New surgery. To have another surgery, you know, it's kind of something that I would consider if. You know, my quality of life is not at a place where I feel is uh, is acceptable, and I'm really struggling in my day-to-day -day living. And it's something that maybe I would consider. And more or less, yeah, yeah. On the same subject, you said earlier that you were taking it step by step, <coughs> but knowing that surgery is not something you're looking for right now, given your situation, what's the next step? Are you? Waiting for the need to heal by itself, or waiting for another opinion. What do you think? Yeah, well, like just continuing my rehab, it hasn't been uh, it hasn't been successful, you know, thus far. Um, it's, that's been the real frustrating part. But I, you know, I've talked to several people, and you know, my injury tends to, you know, I've had several people talk to me who have had this type of injury, and they've uh, it's taken a, you know over a year for them to to start feeling normal. So I'm still holding out hope. I might go, you know, there's a possibility of maybe more another injection, but you know, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. It's like, uh, I just have to continue trying to, trying to solve a problem. But like I said, you know, another, that surgery is, uh, is a little bit worrisome for me. Terry, uh, looking forward to the rest of the season. Uh, we spoke with Kent Hughes, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and was saying it's up to you if you want to stay close with the team or not, uh, depending on how you feel. What what uh, do you see? Uh, what's your position about this? Are you hanging around uh, a little bit with the boys? Uh, yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of guys on this team that I've played with. You know, it's. Uh, any injured guy will tell you that it's kind of a weird position to be in. You know, you feel like you're a part of the team, but you don't really feel like you're a part of the team. You know, it's kind of you're kind of in a gray area, especially when you're, you know, projected to be out an extended period of time. I don't want to be in there every day and, you know, be u using up resources, you know, like on the day, like these guys come in here and they work hard every day, you know, they see trainers every day and I don't want to impede their, you know, their progress, you know, like I'm not going to be a part of the, I'm not going to be a part of that process here in the, this season, so. You know, I just don't want to. Uh, I feel like I'm in the way. You know, I'll I'll be around. You know, like I like I miss being with the guys. Like any player who's not playing will tell you. You know, it's a, really a something they miss the most of is joking around with the guys. So you know, I still have uh, you know some really close friends on this team. There's a lot of guys on this team that I haven't played with also. So I'm just trying to respect their space and their resources and their time. And you know, I'll definitely be hanging around. Like. You know, I enjoy being being with these guys and being able to talk with the fellows that I've played with before and getting to know some of the new players. So, uh, a lot of people 
people go back to Chris Kreider, that incident there, and think that this is where your your woes with your knees <coughs> started, um, but you had your obviously your your heart season right after. But have you been able to identify or be told what was like the origin or the source of those issues to your knees, and, and was it qualified as being degenerated? Yeah, I think that all started from you know probably about eight years old. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a demanding uh, position on uh, on a body, especially in your uh, as you get older in your mid thirties. Um, you know, it's just it's it's just a progression. You know, like I've had like ankle issues, hip issue, back issue, and like the older you get, you just don't recover from that as well. And I think it's just like an accumulation of uh, uh, playing hard for a long time. Hi, Gary. Thanks for your time. Uh, while you rehab, did you talk to Jeff Dawson or Jeff Gordon about maybe a special role in the community or public appearances or something? Yeah, I talked to Jen about that, actually. We have a few plans for this season, so there'll definitely be uh, something in the works for sure. Uh -huh. Gary, uh, you talked about the time you spent with your family earlier. Uh, you, uh, you go hunting, you went to a basketball game, you went to the Alouettes game. Uh, I guess you haven't had that much free time for the last maybe 15 years. <laughs> uh, does it make you realize that the transition or the, the day you will retire wouldn't be uh, that bad? Yeah, it's definitely been uh, been a pleasure being able to do things outside of uh, you know your bubble because when you're playing hockey, you're so like goal focused and you don't really do much outside of uh, maybe going to the odd dinner here and there, but. You're so uh, you're so focused on your job during the season that uh, you don't really get an opportunity a lot of the time to kind of get out of that. And um, it's been uh, it's been fun to be able to take the kids out to, to different sporting events. And you know, me and Angela being able to go to a basketball game has been fun. And I've spent a lot of time, you know, out of the city and um, you know, gotten a real appreciation for the area outside of you know, Broussard and, and downtown. It's been a It's been fun to be able to go uh, go exploring a little bit. So you'll be able to transit pretty well the day, when, when the day will come. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I've always been uh, been a hobbyist, so you know, three kids as well is uh, is no uh, there's not a ton of time off. So. Alexandre, Nancy, Kevin, Paris. Hey, Kerry. Uh, you, you described earlier your injury uh, or the surgery as being intrusive and worrisome if you decide to take that path. Uh, Can you explain a little bit? I'm sure you feel like an expert in knee injuries now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain a little bit what, what this is exactly and what, what makes it uh, intrusive and worrisome and what are the chances if you ever decide to take it to go there that it actually works? Yeah, the, the uh, surgery is called OATS. Uh, our pen could probably give you the insight on what it's all about now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's uh, basically they're taking a plug of uh, cartilage and bone from a low wear area in your knee and placing it in the in the cartilage damaged area um, you know it's it's pretty it's, it's pretty serious and uh, you know the success rate is you know above 50 percent and you know from a pessimistic perspective it's like well you know there's 50 percent chance that it could not work or 30 percent chance or whatever but you know it's uh, something unless I was in dire need of it you know, to get through my life is something that, uh, you know, maybe I would consider at that point. But, you know, right now it's I got I'm looking at my young kids and being able to play with them, you know, on a day to day is uh, is the most important thing for me. Good morning, Carrie. Lindsay Richardson with APTN. I'm just wondering, in this time away from the ice, have you reflected at all on your legacy and what it means for other Indigenous folks? Yeah, I um, always keep that in the back of my mind for sure. Um, you know, I've always tried to be a, you know, positive role model for Indigenous youth. And, um, you know, as far as my legacy goes, I just, you know, I haven't really, like, thought about it much, you know, to be honest. Like, when you're playing hockey and you're in it, you're always just focused on the next goal, the next goal, the next thing, next next thing you're trying to achieve. And, you know, I haven't really... Um, You know, again, I'm trying to achieve another thing. I'm trying to get healthy again, so I haven't really, you know, until the day I retire, I probably won't reflect on that that much. I just, I guess, 
if there was one thing I'd want to be, you know, recognized as is just a hard worker and a good guy, I guess. We'll take a few more. Kevin, and then follow up from Smoidy and Eric Angles. Thank you, Eric. Um, you talk about playing with your kids, and I understand you want to be pain-free on a day-to-day -day basis. So what would it take to come back? Because I guess get, getting back on the ice would be <coughs> some risk in terms of quality of life. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, this game is t it's tough on the body. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, like my first goal is to get healthy. Like once I do that, then I can start considering being able to train at a, at a professional level. Right now, I cannot train at a professional level. So once I get to that, then I'll consider that. But until then, this is my goal, is just to get healthy. You said a few times that the, how, how, how much the game is tough for the body, for the, especially for a goalie, and you've been doing this job for a long time now. There's been a, there's been a few goaltenders in, uh, in the league, like Pecorine and you, who had major surgery, uh, sometimes surgery is plural. Do you feel that there's a need for a change in the way goaltenders, the young goaltenders, learn this, this job and go, go through the process of be, becoming a pro? Because it feels like it, it gets more hard and hard and hard, and maybe there's a need for a change, in the, maybe a technical side. What do you feel about that? Right now, goaltenders are better than they've ever been, and they're they're that way because they play the way they do. And uh, you know, it's a competitive world out there. Everybody wants to be here. You know, at the end of the day, and I don't think there's a kid out there that wouldn't sacrifice anything to be here. And uh, you know, it's 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 part of the cost that you pay. And um, you know, I've paid it. If I were to do it all over again, would I do it? You know I would. So, you know, the best thing you can do is try and take care of your body as best you can because this job is not easy and it's going to be demanding. There's no way around it. You can't, you can't sugarcoat it. But the thing you can do is just try and manage yourself as best as possible. Take care of your body. Take care of your mentals. And as uh, Marshawn Lynch said, take care of your chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, we'll go with Eric, Stu, I thought it was interesting before when you were talking about the playoffs, talking about the mental stress of it all. Your teammates have constantly talked about how all that you exuded was calm and casual and cool. And I'm thinking about a couple moments. One, at the end of last season, the last game you played where you, there was 10 seconds left on the clock and the play was still going on and you were waving at your family. And the other, when you came out for this ovation at the beginning of the year, and you seem totally at peace right now. But internally, are you at peace with the possibility that you, you might have played your last game for the Canadians? It's so it's still like uh, you know it's something that you're you, you digest, and I don't think uh, you know I fully have done that yet, to be honest. Um, you know, there's like that outside hope of you know a miracle happening that I could maybe come back and play at some point, but. You know, I've always been uh, been a bit of an optimist, so uh, you know I'm not giving up, and definitely not giving up on winning a Stanley Cup in some some aspect, you know, whatever position that would be, um, you know. So yeah, I'm just uh, you know just trying to trying to focus on all the positives of life, and you know, right now my kids are really giving me that av avenue. My wife is being you know very supportive, and my family. I'm a very lucky individual, and I'm trying to keep all these things in perspective. If you shoot around a lot, you could come back as a winger, maybe. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind sniping a few, hit a few goalies in the head, maybe. <laughs> Gary, I understand you do everything you can to try and come back. Obviously, the thought of life after hockey is probably in your mind a little bit, too. I'm just wondering if hockey had never worked out for Carey Price, what do you think life would have been like? What do you think you would have done? Boy, that's uh, that's a question I've pondered quite a bit, and I still don't have the answer to that one. <laughs> you know, I feel like ever since I was a kid, I was just so focused on being a hockey player. I just knew that that's what I wanted to do, and I I basically put put everything I had into it my whole life. And you know, I was very fortunate to you know one have the support of my family and you know coaches and. You know, I was very lucky to be able to take take advantage of all the opportunities that I had along the way, and it worked out for me. But, you know, what would I have been? I don't know. But it, I would have been working with my hands, that's for sure. 
uh, Carrie, do you talk with uh, Shea Weber once in a while? Because you're going through the same process. But in this case, we all, we all know that he's done. Uh, how does he feel? And uh, can you take something from him, like yeah. a lesson? Yeah, we're we're definitely going through a, a similar circumstance. You know, we kind of uh, we both take into the woods, so we have that in uh, in common. Um, you know, I think he's got the same approach that I've had. He's really focusing on his family, and you know, he's he's uh, you know taking care of uh, of Beckett playing hockey, and you know, just enjoying his time at home too. Um, you know, we uh, you know we've shared a lot of laughs and and some serious hurt together and um you know i have a lot of respect for shay and and his process and it's you know i actually didn't really get to see him a whole lot this summer you know we crossed paths a few times and chatted a bit but uh you know we'll definitely have a lot more chats probably in a ground blind or at some point in our lives so you know i'm uh you know i just wanted to wish him the best of luck really Gary, a few weeks ago, I spoke to a few of your former teammates when you were starting your pro career, and they were telling me that you, you uh, arrived to Hamilton with your cowboy hat on the head, and they were thinking one day we'll have to take it off, you know, to adapt to the others, to the NHL world. And, but how proud are you to have been able to stay honest and loyal to, to your values, you know, up to the next day? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, kind of all comes down to just, you know, remembering where I came from, you know, came from a remote area in Anaheim Lake, I'm very proud of, of being from there. And I've never, uh, I've never lost sight of that. You know, it's, it's a part of me, you know, you know, I was raised in a, in a very loving family and um, I'm just very proud of, of them and, and, and the type of people that I grew up with. So what's the best thing that you will keep from the whole experience here? Ah, uh, boy. Boy, there's, there's, the list is too long to, I think, really point out one thing. I just can't believe how fast it's gone by, you know. It, it's, uh, you know, i really envious of all these young players coming into the league now. The league's better than it's ever been, and, you know, they're uh, they're just very lucky to be here, and I'm I'm very envious of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> All right. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Thanks, Gary. Bon, non, c'est tout.